This is the last section for Unit 6, and this section is going to be on viruses and other acellular agents. Acellular or non-cellular agents include viruses, viroids, and prions. They lack most characteristics of life and are obligate intracellular parasites. Viruses have one or several pieces of DNA or RNA, but not both. There is no cytoplasmic membrane, but they may have an envelope. They lack cytoplasm in organelles, with one exception. Virions are the extracellular state of viruses. They consist of a capsid or protein coat around a nucleic acid core to form the nucleocapsid. The outer layer provides protection and recognition sites and is also involved in penetrating the cell. The viral envelope typically fuses with the cell membrane. Once inside, it enters the intracellular state and the capsid is removed and it exits as a nucleic acid. Viral genetic material exists as double-stranded or single-stranded DNA or RNA. It may be linear or form several molecules. Viruses have smaller genomes than cells. The MS2 phage has only three genes, while E. coli has over 4,000 genes. Viral hosts are very specific because viruses have an affinity for surface proteins or glycoproteins. The complementary proteins or glycoproteins are specific not only to the host, but sometimes even for the cell type. That bacteriophage or phage is a virus that infects bacteria. So here's a nice link to a website that gives a lot of information on characteristics of viruses. Viral size ranges from 10 nanometers to 300 nanometers in diameter, which is about the size of the smallest bacteria. The capsid has the protein coat for attachment and protection. Capsomeres are the proteinaceous subunits of the capsid and may be single or multiple types of proteins. With helical-shaped viruses, the capsomeres bond in a spiral to form a tube around the nucleic acid. The polyhedral is roughly spherical in shape, similar to a geodesic dome. The two-sided icosahedron, that, or the actually 20-sided icosahedron, is the most common. Others have complex shapes, including the icosahedral head with a genome and tail fibers to make them look like a spaceship. The viral envelope is a membrane around the capsid, which is acquired from the host during replication or release. It consists of the phospholipid bilayer and proteins. Some viral encoded glycoproteins appear on the outside. Both the envelope proteins and glycoproteins are often involved in host recognition. Viruses are categorized by the type of nucleic acid, presence of an envelope, and the shape and size. The family is the highest taxonomic group. Viruses cannot reproduce themselves and are dependent on the host. You'll find if you try and classify the viruses taxonomically, it can be kind of frustrating because it is not going to fit into all the same categories that you're used to for other things, being that the family is the highest group. So here's another website that just has general information on viruses. Lytic viral replication begins with the virion attaching to the host. The virion enters and inserts the genome into the host. Viral nucleic acids and proteins are synthesized by the host. The virions are assembled within the host and released. In lytic replication of the T4 phage in E. coli, attachment is by random collision since the virion is non-mobile. Upon contact, T4 releases lysozyme to weaken the cell wall. The tail sheath fibers force 
in a hollow tube and it injects the genome. The capsid is abandoned on the outside. Viral enzymes degrade the host DNA and begin synthesizing viruses. Capsomeres accumulate to form capsids and attach head and tail fibers. After assembly, the genome is inserted. The process occurs spontaneously. The lysosome continues to disintegrate the cell wall and new virions are released. Lytic replication of the T4 virus takes about 25 minutes and produces 100 to 200 virions for each cell lysed. And here's a little video that shows video replication of the T4 virus. Lysogeny is a modified replication cycle in which the infected host cell grows and reproduces normally for many generations before they lyse. This is seen with the lambda phage in E. coli. In this case, the viral DNA enters the cell, but the host DNA is not destroyed. The phage genome does not immediately take control, and the virus remains inactive as a prophage. A repressor protein keeps the prophage inactive and makes the bacteria resistant to additional infection by other viruses of the same type. The viral DNA is inserted into the host chromosome, and daughter cells of lysogenic cells are infected. Descendants may be part of the chromosome for many generations. Induction is the process of excising the prophage from the host chromosome and occurs at some time later. Inductive agents are typically the same physical or chemical agents that damage DNA. Virions are assembled and released. And again, we've got a video of this process happening. Animal viruses require an exact fit of the proteins and glycoproteins. Animal viruses lack tails and tail fibers, but have glycoprotein spikes or attachment molecules on the capsid or envelope. There are a few ways for animal viruses to enter and encode. Direct penetration occurs with naked viruses such as polio. The genome enters while the capsid remains on the surface. With enveloped viruses, the entire capsid and contents enter the cell, and the viral capsid is removed by uncoating. These include measles and mumps. The viral envelope and host membrane fuse with the envelope and glycoproteins, becoming part of the membrane. Most enveloped viruses enter the host after attachment to receptor molecules on the cell surface that stimulate the cell to phagocytize the entire virus. This is carried out by the herpes virus. And here is a website. This one's a good one that gives a lot of comparisons of the different types of animal viruses. Viral synthesis is dependent on the type of genetic material in the virus. Double-stranded DNA viruses will have a synthesis similar to replication of normal DNA. The viral genome is encoded and the viral DNA serves as a template for RNA. The RNA is transcribed and used to make capsomere proteins in the cytoplasm and spontaneously assemble virions. These include the herpes and papillomaviruses. Some exceptions in the double-stranded DNA viruses are the pox viruses, which are synthesized and assembled in the cytoplasm with no nuclear involvement. HBV uses an RNA intermediary instead of replicating the DNA from the DNA. The single-strand DNA viruses, such as the parvoviruses, enter the host and produce a new strand of DNA complementary to the viral genome to produce the double-stranded DNA and then follows the double-stranded pattern. One way of kind of comparing these things is to draw out the double-stranded pattern and then draw out the other patterns and see where they come in and join and follow the double-stranded pattern can kind of help tie all of these different types of replication together for you. The positive sense single-stranded RNA can act directly as an mRNA as it does in the polio virus. The complementary negative sense RNA is transcribed by viral RNA polymerase and the 
negative sense RNA serves as a template for the transcription of the positive sense single-stranded RNA genomes. Retroviruses have a positive sense single-stranded RNA, but not, do not use the genome mRNA. Instead, they use a DNA intermediary described from the transcribed from the positive sense RNA. Reverse transcriptase in the capsid is used for this. The DNA intermediary serves as a template for synthesis of a positive sense RNA that acts similar to an mRNA and a genome for new virions. This is seen in HIV and the reverse transcriptases are now used in DNA technology to make the cDNA. The single-stranded RNA viruses have negative sense RNA that is not recognized by ribosomes. It carries an RNA-dependent RNA transcriptase in the capsid. It transcribes the positive sense RNA from the negative sense RNA genome, and then the transcribed positive sense RNA is used for transcription and as a template to make negative sense RNA genomes. This is seen in rabies and flu viruses. In double-stranded RNA viruses, the strand serves as a template for translation of proteins. It's going to use it as an mRNA. It makes a different RNA polymerase to, to, to transcribe more double-stranded DNA, with each strand acting as a template for transcription of the opposite strand. This is done by rotaviruses. This section has such a huge amount of material that I know a lot of it is, is to the point where it's so overwhelming that it becomes almost boring to look at it. There are two long videos here that are put out that I think are really worthwhile to give you a bigger picture in your mind of the diversity of microbes. This first one is put out by the California Institute of Technology on Microbial Diversity. There's three parts to it. I believe that one comes out to be close to about two hours. And then there is one here, a BBC video, Why Do Viruses Kill? It's got four parts that you can watch it as through this series of links here. Each is about 15 minutes. There is also an alternate link here that has it all in one video. You can, whichever set of links works better for you, go ahead and use. But I think those two virus those two video series will help give you a bigger picture of what to take away from this unit and then saving the document so that you can refer back to the links that have more detail in there as it becomes pertinent to you. This is this document here that I've given you for the notes is just an overview of this huge field that's microbiology.